Ladies and gentlemen, may I present... Chad Chili here today. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, a subject that's been confusing and troublesome for some people. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about ketogenesis, ketosis, and ketoacidosis. Uh, people seem to confuse the three and I always find that interesting because from my perspective, uh, being that I know the difference between all three, for me oftentimes I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, they're completely different. But I think where people get hung up is keto, keto, keto. And people automatically assume that they must be the same thing, similar, or of all things, you know, people assume that they're like one just leads right into the next one. It can, but it doesn't. So let me explain these really quick coming through here, because I just want this to be a simple rundown. Ketogenesis is something that's normal actually. This happens even while you sleep. Ketogenesis is just simply the ketone bodies being produced from fatty acid breakdown. All that basically means is your body is burning some fat, which is what you want it to be doing anyways. This happens whenever there's no carbohydrates available. This obviously happens for most of us while we're sleeping unless you have you know, titration of uh, glucose hooked up to your vein. Um, and then of course your fatty acids are breaking down um, and because of acetyl-CoA. Uh, it's acetyl-CoA-enzyme A. We're not going to get really into that a whole bunch, but basically what happens is as your fatty acids break down, it causes an, an accumulation of acetyl-CoA, which then triggers ketogenesis. Ketogenesis being ketone generating. Totally normal. The next one we will have is, keto, is ketosis here. And in ketosis, you have slightly elevated levels of ketones. Now, I don't want to freak you out because when I say elevated, I'm not talking like, oh man, it's off the charts. You have serious elevations, like you might have a serious elevation of blood glucose if you were a diabetic. Not the case here. We're just slightly elevated. And what that means is we're higher than what's considered normal which what really is normal. This again happens from an absence of carbs or glucose. If they're unavailable for an extended period of time, fasting, how about an endurance event? Maybe you're running a marathon and you're not pounding those gels and stuff like that. What happens is this, we're gonna get a little bit fancy for a split second here, citric acid cycle. It's also known as the TCA or Krebs cycle. Um, what happens is MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, they're not bound to albumin. Uh, the body doesn't like to use fats that are bonded to, uh, well, to anything actually, but more specifically, the body doesn't like to use fats that are bonded to albumin. Um, what happens then, okay, is the body's going to take these MCTs and break them down to this little cycle that it goes through, and you're going to end up with acetoacetate, that is a ketone ester, that breaks down into acetone which is why we have the bad breath. Mind you, acetone is not a bad thing because it, uh, we can get into the, the hydrogen molecule here, but it's not a hydrogen ion that uh, bonds to other things, so the acetone is actually, it's, it's pretty safe in your body. Where we get into problems now is ketoacidosis. This is an excessive, extreme, uncontrolled ketosis, okay? What happens is the pancreas can't produce insulin. And if the pancreas can't produce insulin, it can't put the brakes on this whole process. So you have this ketosis here, but you can't slow that process down. Because the process can't be slowed down, it results in an excess of ketones. As those ketones keep rising, it raises the acidity of the blood. So in other words, your pH drops. Now this is where it becomes a problem because once your blood becomes acidic, um, it's potentially fatal. So the so thing is that I want to point out here though, is this does not occur in otherwise healthy individuals. This is a risk for people who are diabetic, but for an otherwise healthy individual, your pancreas is still able to produce insulin. Hence, you will not shift from ketosis to ketoacidosis. Yeah, you're gonna have some bad breath. You know, maybe your, your sweat smells a little funky. Uh, maybe your urine smells a little, not so nice because it's gonna smell like it has acetone in it because it does. But the thing is you're not gonna get into this state over here, the ketoacidosis. So in any case, I hope that clears things up. I hope that that was simple, easy to follow. Now you understand the difference. Ketogenesis, ketosis, ketoacidosis, 
not the same thing. One doesn't necessarily lead to the other, okay? Though it can, but chances are if you're an otherwise healthy individual, you're never going to make it over to this side. That's all for now. What's the matter with you people? I was joking! Don't you know a joke when you hear one? <laughs>